everyone. Welcome to Leaders of Tomorrow, India's largest platform for entrepreneurs. Any questions related to any aspect of your business, uh, we've got it covered here on the show. I'm Sunanda Jai Seelin in the LOT hot seat tonight. We've got some exciting entrepreneurs, people who are making a change in their individual industries. Let's dive right in and uh, welcome and introduce them. Dr. Lena S. Founder, The Nail Artistry. On the other side of a break, Sabarna Roy, author. I'm in conversation with Om Toke, veteran blogger, founder of Bloggers World, STM Dusra and Webphysis. Also, Prati Gauri, creator of the Fifth Industrial Revolution and India President, Fifth Element Group. taking the time to join us here on the leaders of tomorrow uh, i want to talk to you first and foremost about the fact that you wear multiple hats from uh, modeling i understand to now the online news publishing business uh, give us a brief sense for a viewer who's logged in about you know your journey so far and how you managed to wear these different hats so my journey has been gratifying i would say and i'm extremely thankful to god for um, actually that he chose me to experience so much in life and choosing my own destiny. In fact, I was born and raised in Dubai and I came down to Bangalore to do my bachelor's in dental surgery. And then there was a brief stint in acting and modeling and then got married and then the nail artistry happened. So uh, it's been extremely gratifying and I'm extremely happy at wherever I'm placed today. Okay. Can you talk to us about the nail artistry then, Nina? Well, the nail artistry has its flagship store in uh, Cochin. We started off in Cochin and there's a small story behind it. So um, mm -hmm. I was a person who never used to be interested in doing nails. And uh, today it is very, very important to be well groomed. And it was my husband who introduced me to the beauty of nails and also to the world of nails. And after that, I was totally glued to it. So when we wanted to start in coaching, because we moved to coaching for a brief period, there was a total dearth of nail salons in coaching. So he said, let's start off here. But I was a little skeptical because ours was the first nail salon and we were um, not sure how the people would receive it. But thankfully, people have received it with open arms. And uh, today I can say that I am rightfully proud to say that I opened nail artistry and I'm extremely happy and um, glad that my husband supported me in this decision. Okay. Uh, give us a sense then, you know, uh... Uh, how the nail artistry perhaps has positioned itself very differently uh, when it comes to uh, other salons who are possibly uh, offering the same or similar kind of services. When we started nail artistry in Cochin, we started off with very nail specific services like um, nail extensions, gel extensions and so on. But when we started in Chennai, we ventured and expanded our horizon into hair services as well. But I would say ours, the nail artistry is the first super luxury nail salon in India and our services are top notch. So be it our services, our hospitality, our autoclave or sterilization procedures or all very different so what next then for the nail artistry uh, kerala tamil nadu uh, where next so uh, we started in Cochin, then we expanded it to Chennai, and then now we have plans to start this year in Bangalore. With all the love and appreciation from our patrons and clients, we are planning to go international this year, and we're planning to start our first international salon in Las Vegas. Wow, fantastic. Wish you all the best for that. Uh, I do want to talk about the online news publishing space. I'm curious as to why, uh, you know, you you decided to look at this space uh, what that venture is going to be what plans there can you share with us so we live in a very digital age now and everybody looks up to online news portals and social media for updates but using this a lot of uh, unscrupulous uh, messages and fake news have been doing the rounds and the news express post is opened only to fight against 
fake journalism and fake news. So our uh, fight is against this and we also have hired a lot of seasoned journalists so that there's a lot of fact-based news that reaches the public and in a very informative way. All right. Thank you. Thank you yeah, and all the very best for the yeah, new thanks. launch. Sabarna Roy, such a pleasure having you here on the Leaders of Tomorrow, talking about the many hats that you wear. And I want to start with the one that's been in the news of uh, late, the most recent one, of course, and the launch of your seventh book. Uh, you don't really uh, have a training, if I can call it that, when it comes to, you know, writing background per se. You're more uh, trained as an engineer, but uh, you are now, of course, uh, an acclaimed author. Where did that start? What has that journey been like? You know, we can talk to our viewers on that. Thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, let me tell you, uh, I started writing uh, very seriously in 2007, in the summer of 2007, when I actually felt that if I did not write, I would die. So that was the motivation to start writing. Point number one. Point number two, uh, I had uh, the initial first three years was uh, practically lost in getting a publisher, uh, getting the publisher to convey uh, to, I mean, basically to convince the publisher to publish my book. And of course, the publication happened in 2010. My first book came out in 2010. Initially, it was not selling well, but thereafter, I think it pick, picked up momentum. Thereafter, I started con concentrating a lot on uh, opening up my diaries or journals for publication. Uh, let's talk, though, about the fact that uh, you're also very passionate, I understand, when it comes to ecology, the environment. Uh, where has that passion really come about? And, uh, you know, we could then talk about some of the announcements that we've heard uh, from the finance minister and the central government really, which has been focusing so much uh, on what's happening on the environment when it comes to clean energy, etc. But first, uh, let's discuss what you're doing in the area. You know, something very interesting. Between 1850 and today, there has been a temperature rise globally of around uh, one and a half degrees centigrade. Now that actually looks very little but uh, if it grows in this manner for the next 50 years, uh, we can expect uh, tornadoes, hurricanes, typhoons, earthquakes, and various other things all over the globe. So we are targeting at a figure of zero by 2050. Now, I don't know whether it will happen in our lifetime or in my lifetime or not, but of course, uh, by 2050, we are targeting a figure of zero. Now, what is happening is with respect to our country, we need a lot of deforestation to take place permanently. Uh, we have to focus on renewable energies, of course, uh, solar energy. The central government has given a lot of focus on this solar energy, adoption of solar energy. And coal has been, and in fact, the thermal sector has been completely banned for all practical purposes. Now, in the iron, steel, and the cement sector, which are the major polluting industries, we require a lot of innovation, R&D, and uh, uh, breakthroughs, inventions, to make competitive sure. uh, uh, technologies in the iron and steel and cement sector. Now, this is a major, major sure. challenge as far as India is concerned. Small businesses, SMEs, MSMEs, those are also very close to your heart. Uh, you know, maybe one or two challenges, Sabarna, if you could, uh, through this interview, talk to our viewers the biggest challenges that you see for small businesses. You see, one of the things is that in your inclusive growth story, I think the sustainable mm -hmm. agriculture and the MSMEs are crucial to the inclusive growth story. All right. Now, the union budget, if you see... Uh, uh, which was presented on February 1, has uh, increased the allocation from 7,572 crore last year up to 15,700 uh, crore for this uh, for the current uh, for the next financial year. So the majority of the allocation for 2021-22 is for the emergency credit line guarantee scheme. Now, yeah. industry sources pointed out that the government 
had announced the scheme to help MSMEs revive when the lockdown restrictions were relaxed and several MSMEs had benefited from it. Businesses who are hit by the uh, shoddy implementation of GST did not get any tax relief. There has been no reduction in corporate tax, proprietorship or partnership model. Yeah. Uh, businesses still constitute 48 to 50 percent of the business in the country. So these are the uh, while there has been uh, an increase in the uh, allocation, doubling in the allocation, but there have been some problems too. The Jaljivan Mission Rural, which started mm -hmm. last year, uh, which was declared in the last year budget. And in this year, mm -hmm. the National Infrastructure Pipeline, which also includes uh, irrigation, rural water supply, water and sanitation, and uh, Amrot and uh, various kinds of Jaljivan Mission urban projects. So these kind of env environmental and infrastructure projects, if they reach people on time, uh, will be mm. a great benefit uh, to the people. And I think then uh, the kind of uh, language, the political language that is being used today in the country would not be required to be used provided uh, you really deliver on these schemes. All right. Thank you for your time. Lovely chatting with you. Thank you. I'm going to slip into a short break on that note. Uh, in the LOT hot seat on the other side are two young entrepreneurs, Prati Gauri and Om Toke. What are they doing uh, and why are they in the hot seat? We'll answer that when we come back in just a moment. Stay tuned. Welcome back with us here on Leaders of Tomorrow and Tonight. In our LOT hot seat are two young entrepreneurs, Om Thuke and Prati Kauri. Om, Pratik, uh, thank you so much for your time here on the Leaders of Tomorrow. Exciting to talk to uh, young entrepreneurs like yourselves. And I want to, you know, start there. Uh, if I can come to you first, Om, and talk about what the highlights of your entrepreneurial journey have been like. What would you like to tell our viewers watching? So I got started as a blogger way back in 2005 when there was no YouTube, no Twitter, no Facebook. I was uh, just a small kid trying to make some money online. And I got started as a blogger and I started uh, making money with Google AdSense. So from 2005 to 11, it was more of uh, just making money from Google AdSense. I was a kid, like I said, and I started uh, WebForces as a pure play content agency. And uh, since then, the internet has evolved a lot, right? Google has rolled off flurry of updates. We have Facebook evolving. We had Instagram. Now a lot of things have changed. And during those uh, changes, uh, Google rolled out an algorithmic change, which sort of wiped out 90% uh, of my empire in 2011. So I started with forces in 2009. And then since then, I've bootstrapped multiple successful digital ventures, uh, latest of them being uh, digital scalers with Pratik and uh, STM Dusra, which is the world's largest affiliate marketing force. So Pratik, if you can talk to us about fifth industrial revolution, uh, the name sounds really interesting. What can you tell us about what the business does? Thanks, Ananda, for having having me. Uh, so fifth industrial revolution, as you guys know, fourth industrial revolution is all about uh, using all sorts of frontier tech and you're seeing all sorts of tech businesses into the play in the last, you know, a couple of decades with AI, 3D printing, blockchain, etc. But um, we all know the advancements that have happened due to uh, technology, but there have been a lot of harms that have been caused uh, uh, due to technology as well. So fifth industrial revolution is a concept where we say that we can actually work at the intersection of purpose and profits and where we say that you know if we have a purpose if, if we are running a brand as an individual um, or as a company we have a purpose then you can actually end up making more revenues and profits if if the brand is aligned with the purpose so um, you know if you are working on say a healthy juice brand then you can probably uh, make more money and can have more revenues and more profits because you're actually helping the environment or helping helping um 
the society as a whole. So it's it's about working on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal. There are 17 goals which are all around, you know, education, health, yeah. climate, renewables. So, you know, working around that and making sure that we work at the intersection of purpose and profits, um, uh, which amplifies the profits if you're concentrating on a purpose. That's why Fifth Industrial Revolution. Okay, so I want to talk about the role of marketing, particularly in 2021, both content and affiliate marketing. Uh, Prateek, if you can, you know, handle the question on content marketing, you know, what do you want our viewers to know? How have things perhaps changed? What's 2021 looking like? What are some of the tips and tricks you can share? Yeah, so if you look at 2020, you know, uh, the content marketing has really, really, I mean, it, it's been a redefinition when you talk about content marketing. So I'll just give you a small example. Uh, we we helped build a show by John Krasinski in the US called Some Good News. It actually became a worldwide sensation and a phenomena during COVID. And what we were doing during COVID was, you know, we started on YouTube and we were trying to produce content. Uh, amidst all the bad news that were happening in COVID, we were trying to broadcast and show consumers on how good content and how people were doing good even amidst uh, the crisis that happened last year. So, you know, and mm-hmm. that ended up getting sold to Viacom after just six months. So you can imagine the kind of success you can get if you are focusing on a purpose, which I was just mentioning about 5IR, Fifth Industrial Revolution, and also when you talk about content, consumers are now mm-hmm. wanting to watch content which has a purpose. So it, it can't be just any content and because of COVID, you know, everybody ha- is glued to their mobile phones and which which means that there's so much content available. So unless you're producing something which is really cool, then it's really hard for you to get consumer attention. And, and when I talk about 2021, I think there's going to be a, a, a shift where consumers are going to start watching uh, only that kind of content, which has a purpose. Again, going back to 5IR. So it's not going to be any random content, which is going to be very, very purposeful content. How would you really encourage people? What is your advice? What do you think should be done if you're focusing on the impact? Therefore, companies and people and businesses looking more at the outcome and, you know, therefore creating the products or solutions. Uh, what would you want to tell us? So yeah, so that, that's what I was saying. So you know, in, in this is the so we are going to leave from from fourth industrial revolution to the fifth industrial revolution, courtesy COVID, because you know COVID is actually going to leapfrog us and uh, you know make us jump into that. And when we jump into that, then brands are starting to realize yeah. that if you have a purpose, if you focus on an impact issue, then you can end up you know promoting your brand even more. So it's it's better even to hit your marketing metrics, and that's why that's why we work with a lot of Fortune 500 companies where we help them uh, you know uh, transition their entire model from a for profit model to a for benefit model basically states that you can end up creating more revenues and profits uh, if you have if you are creating impact so if you talk about rainwater harvesting which falls mm-hmm. under say sustainable development goal six which is clean water and sanitation so if you're focusing on SDG six if you're you know have an execution partner which is kind of building those kind of facilities just take an example you're building toilets across the across rural India and then if you're promoting your brand through it the kind of recall the consumers will have on the brand will be much more rather than just showing a TV commercial. So it's like, you know, how can you use impact to also create more, hit more marketing metrics? So that's the change that's going to happen in the entire marketing landscape. Pratik, uh, that is as far as content marketing is concerned. Omar, what exactly is affiliate marketing? What can you tell our viewers? You know, you would see a lot of people uh, trying to gauge about uh, skills like coding, programming, right? Yeah. So PHP, C++. But uh, you will see a lot of people talking about blogging or content marketing. Uh, of course, there are a bunch of so-called digital marketing institutes out there. But apart from them, uh, you don't have a, a full-fledged solution where you can learn about affiliate marketing. And uh, STM has been one of the pioneers in the industry since 2010. And we have officially okay. collaborated with the forum to launch STM Dusra, which obviously means the second STM, uh, catered uh, exclusively for the Indian audience at a much competitive price point so that we can help them learn. And the focus is on, uh, you know, the real learning, live learning. So sure. most of the times the programs fail because the person who's teaching is probably on a salary of 20, 25,000 rupees. But whereas we are trying to create an impact, we are trying to you know the who's, of, who's who of affiliate marketing industry and uh, they have done millions of dollars of revenues themselves and they are not uh, teaching you theoretical knowledge they are you practical inside what's working right now you can learn live and then implement it right away versus a traditional college or a degree or anything else for that matter what exactly are omni wins first of all 
So Omniwins is a concept that, you know, uh, we've been trying to advocate, which says that if you bring in different sectors together, you know, it can be a win-win-win. So it doesn't need to be a win-lose situation. It can be a win-win-win for different stakeholders. And you can actually amplify the impact you're creating if you bring different stakeholders. So just to give you a small example, there's a large campaign that we are uh, kind of, we helped take uh, Harpik Mission Pani to World Economic Forum in Davos last year. And Harpik Mission Pani is a, a product by Reckitt Benkiser, you know, broadcasted by Network. 18, stewarded by Amitabh Bachchan. So what we did was, you know, you can create an omni where you bring in on one side a private sector company, on the other side you bring in a, a not-for-profit or a social enterprise which has roots on the ground and actually can execute the campaign. So in this case, it was water for people that we brought on the table, which can actually do rainwater harvesting and build for etc. And then the sponsor being the brand. And on the third side, you know, bring in celebrities like Al Gore and Amitabh Bachchan to kind of get the reach that we want. Right. And on the other side, bringing ultra high net worth people to kind of help match fund it, match fund the campaign. So then you're making sure that not only do you have the funds for to run the campaign, not only do you have an execution partner, you have like everything in place. That's more about the omnibus. Uh, I understand the pandemic has been a very busy period for you. You've launched uh, the Bloggers World University. You also uh, did a recent piece with Neha Dupia on becoming Atman Nirbhar. You know, what can you tell us about that? I did have a talk with uh, Neha about becoming Atmanirbhar because during the pandemic period I was uh, listening to a lot of period a uh, lot of people saying you know what is the government doing who's doing something for me I've lost my mother take care of me so I was trying to pass on the message to the youth that hey it's your life right why don't you take charge start doing something about uh, you know a side hustle we earn some money on the side freelancing or any any form of uh, digital marketing because it's much, much easier to and uh, instead of just scribbling, why don't you become true liver and uh, take care of your own life, take charge of your own life. And I think Bloggers World would play a very, very critical role in uh, doing this. If you can talk to us about digital scalers, what the business does and how you and Pratik uh, together, I understand, are really putting this venture together. What can you tell us on that? So basically in digital scalers, we have to scale brands digitally, by, you know, 8 to 10x. And also in the at, at the same time, we want to make sure that they grow their brand presence digitally. So I just met a 25 year old brand, which obviously I cannot do NDA, but I saw they had only 35,000 Facebook page likes in last 25 years. That That, that is crazy, right? <laughs> a brand which is doing mm -hmm. 100 crores to focus digitally. Yeah. So this is where we are trying to come in and trying to help brands understand the importance of digital branding and PR and uh, getting things together the pieces together and then scale digital okay so so with digital scalers what what we are trying to do is um we're trying to build you know a portfolio where we kind of uh, expedite um the progress that brands need to you know leapfrog from say doing a revenue between 10 and 100 crores that's a sweet spot so we work with brands which are doing revenues between 10 and 100 crores and help them reach say possibly more than 500 crores uh, and the reason and the way we do it is kind of build bring in relationship capital and financial capital and then use our blogging network and our entire networks uh, so it's like a gamut of things that we bring into the picture to kind of help brand scale that's why we the name digital scalers it's like kind of helping the brands um, uh, go 10x or what they're currently doing in terms of revenues and also impact and all numbers that they're currently hitting thank you so much for your time both of you Completely out of time on this episode of Leaders of Tomorrow. If you have any feedback for us, our contact details coming up on your screens as we speak. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good night.